next up, our second lightning round session um, at Big Talk from Small Libraries is Dare to Read. Um, we've got Kim Priest, who's from the Mary Cutton Public Library in Kansas, and their population served is uh, 2,500. That's still where you're at at the moment. Always double check those things. Yes. Correct. All right. And she's going to tell us about this awesome program that they are doing uh, for their um, patrons. So go ahead and take it away, Kim. All right, thank you, Krista. Um, I am so pleased to be able to introduce our uh, Dare to Read program to you today. Um, we started this program, uh, it's called Dyslexic and Autistic Reading Engagement, and we started it with a $3,500 grant from Dollar General. Uh, you can actually look up Dollar General, dgliteracy.org, uh, I believe, and uh, for the grant applications and very easy to fill out. Um, and then we had another small uh, donation by uh, Bywater. Uh, their they had a community give back program. Bywater is the um, uh, parent to our online catalog, I guess. Uh, so Bywater um, Solutions, they do, um, yeah, the, they yes. do hot type online catalogs for libraries, yes. Yes. Um, so what we did with this is we started a collection of grade level books and items that are printed in open dyslexic font to encourage dyslexic children and adults to read for enjoyment. And then we also added other children's books explaining what it means to be on the autistic spectrum. Um, so then in accordance with that, um, we try to uh, educate people too. So what are our goals? Um, our number one goal was uh, inclusion. Uh, our patrons are all um, respected and valued, and we wanted to make sure that these children were being included in our story times, our summer reading, our book clubs and craft times. So um, we were interested in finding these better resources for these struggling readers. and. Uh, and along with that, um, some training and information for our staff and our adult leaders. Uh, what we found, we did a little search, you know, everybody comes in and, or has people that come in and say, oh, my child hates to read and is having difficulty reading. So our staff, you know, sometimes they struggle to find that kind of information or uh, the kind of book that a student might be able to read, especially on their own grade level. And uh, so uh, we did a little more searching and we found out that 80% of the people with poor reading skills are likely dyslexic. Um, about 20% of the population, it's estimated, has a language-based learning disability and dyslexia, dys <clears throat> dyslexia is the most common of those. Um, it occurs basically in the same number of males and females tends to be hereditary, but um, it's more diagnosed in the, in males, simply because I had a stu um, special ed teacher tell me the girls are much better at hiding the problem, oh, um, the reading problem. So, and then about one in 44 children in the U.S. are diagnosed as being on the autistic spectrum. We identified 68 students in our elementary school and homeschool groups with one or both conditions. And in a small town like that, that is a lot of people. So we decided, what can we do to help? Um, we decided there was a need for the dyslexic font books. And so with this grant, we were able to um, pick up uh, quite a few. Our collection now um, is almost 500 books that are dyslexic font or dyslexic font friendly. So um, we've identified those. We wanted to give direct access at earlier ages so people, so the kids would have a chance to enjoy reading more. And um, if these books are in regular type books, um, takes away that stigma. You know, a lot of times in uh, a child in classroom, if they can't read, they're taken out of the classroom for special help. Um, but we found that if we can provide a resource that makes it easier for that child to read, um, helps them feel more just like the rest, rest of the kids, you know, and doesn't take away that stigma of being different. Um, 
we provide audio versions with a lot of our titles. Um, you, you know, and I know that um, an audio plus um, the written word when you're listening and reading is a win-win situation all the time. Um, and then we've also found that uh, we can provide e-content versions. And uh, there's a lot of different, uh, uh, oh, different, what do I want to call them? Programs, I guess, that um, allow uh, your content on the screen to be um, switched to a different font that's easier to read. And um, so basically, we're going to go to larger print, um, a darker color with lighter um, words, changing the font, making it better. Hopefully, we find a way to increase the reading scores in the dyslexic or autistic child because he or she will want to read more. Uh, dyslexics tend to be extremely smart and resourceful, but just because they don't read well, they get separated. And so this gives them the opportunity to be just regular kids. This is a, just a small display of some of our uh, Dare to Read books. We've identified them with a blue dot, so it makes them easy to identify for people when they come in. Um, Staff can direct parents and teachers and kids to the titles that we own and give a quick explanation of what we're trying to do. This is just a few tips that we use when we um, have somebody come in. Uh, we always encourage the people to download a browser extension called Open Dyslexia. And um, this is an open source font that's available for free. All these slides that you're seeing right now are in that Open Dyslexia font. Uh, you can see it's a weighted font um, and uh, supposedly it helps keep the words on the page for the kids that, you know, sometimes the words will pop off a page or they have trouble following along. And so this open dyslexic font um, weights it down and helps them follow along better. Um, the different apps that are available, um, the Libby app with OverDrive, um, Hoopla has um, the ability to change your e-content to uh, the Open Dyslexic as well as the Kindle. Um, another thing parents could try is a darker background with light colored fonts. Uh, also enlarging the font to make it easier to read. And we also provide reading strips to direct focus for dyslexic readers. These next couple of slides are um, just a couple of the different places that we picked up our um, textbooks and um, regular reading books. Royal Fireworks Press, uh, the publisher is a severe dyslexic himself and um, managed to put himself through college and um, started this publishing company uh, all his resources are online and um, are, can be found in both regular and dyslexic print. Uh, so we picked up quite a few of these. They're very affordable. Um, he's a really great guy to talk to if you ever have any questions about it too. Um, Amazon.com has terrific resources for both uh, dyslexic and autistics. Um, and they're pretty reasonable prices, uh, definitely worth the time to study the titles and products. Um, in addition, the Kindle app and Audible app are reasonable, reasonably priced uh, and offer a wide variety of adaptable resources in all reading levels. I found that even the um, youngest um, easy readers or um, picture books, a good share of those can also to be switched to the open dyslexic font. So if you have a parent that has reading problems or reading disabilities, that parent can also switch over to this open dyslexic font and maybe have better luck reading to their child. Um, plus, pairing books with audibles is always a win-win situation in our book. Uh, so uh, we kind of came upon this quite by accident. Uh, we had purchased some Here's Hank books. 
and found that they were printed in the open dyslexic font. These are written by Henry, Henry Winkler, a yep. uh, very famous dyslexic. So, um, and I offered it to a family um, that I knew was struggling with dyslexia in their family. And uh, they gave us some very good reviews as far as readability and um, how their kids enjoyed the books. So, um, so we just bought more. <laughs> um, this slide simply shows some rel relevant websites. Um, OpenDyslexic.org is the place you can go to to get the Open Dyslexic font for your computers. Uh, it is free. You can donate if you want to, but it is free. Um, and uh, then the KSDE.org. This is a Kansas State Department of Ed Education um, website. And there's a really good handbook on dyslexia there. Uh, I encourage you, if you're interested in learning more, that's, that's a great resource. CDC.gov. Um, this one uh, uh, tells a lot about autism and uh, the signs and symptoms of autism and what, and uh, really good for general information so that when you, when somebody comes in and um, is talking about, you know, maybe they've got an autistic child and they're looking for different books, you know exactly what they're talking about and um, can offer uh, the different uh, resources to them then. So, um, and one-on-one -on -one seems to be the thing, you know, uh, you can advertise all you want, but basically our biggest, uh, biggest help has been when somebody has come in and they're looking for something, then you can really get down to it and talk to them and find, find what they're looking for. So why develop a dyslexic print collection? Simply because every kid deserves to enjoy reading and that's our main goal. Um, if we can help develop and hone this skill in a dyslexic or autistic child, you know, you should see a noticeably better attitude about life in general. And it definitely should boost achievement in other subjects as well. So that's basically what I've got to tell. Um, we do have about 500 books now that uh, um, wow, we, nice. we can um, loan out to people. We've got access clear across the state of Kansas through our state library. But, um, lending and um, we found it to be, um, you know, pretty popular for some people that um, are looking for that kind of information and that kind of resource. So mm -hmm. I, hope, I hope if you're looking at this, you know, just explore the possibilities because I know everybody has a child that's dyslexic in their community. So, um, and if you, you can- not, You may know it and you might not. You can help them. Yeah, and, it, and if you can help them um, find that e-content that's and help them optimize it, you know, not everybody likes to um, put their kid on a tablet that much more, but um, if it's going to encourage them to read and help them enjoy reading, you know, you got to try it, I think. That's, that's my goal. <laughs> Great, thanks. So that, thanks that's what I've got. Um, all right. Um, okay. So go ahead and leave that slide up for now. I got a couple of questions here to to ask of you that did come in. Uh, some that you already answered during your presentation. So I wanted to know what are some examples of the kind of books you showed them, um, and what is a dyslexic fund friendly font. It's hard to say. Um, but some of us know how to tell if the book is is in a dyslexic font. Is there usually is there something in that book? Or I mean, you did have that one particular place to order from. Um, right. Um, Amazon does have dyslexic print books. Um, so you can look it up dyslexic there. Print, print it to that. Yes, they do. They do have, um, and we've added those. Um, and then some of them also have audio that will go along with it. And we've um, tried to add some of those along to our collection too. Um, a dyslexic friendly font would be like Verdana or Verdana. Mm -hmm. Comic Sans. Uh, we have a family um, with a dyslexic child. Um, the father is dyslexic also, and he said he survived by reading Comic Sans script. 
So um, there are different different um, oh different ones that you can use or that we have identified. Uh, our easy reader books that we put as dyslexic friendly, um, those have wider lines or wider spaces between the lines, larger letters, um, simpler, you know, type of thing, but um, makes it a little easier for a child to follow along in a book. But yeah. I feel um, like, you know, if, if we can make it normal to read a book, you know, that dyslexic child is going to be a lot happier and will uh, participate more. Right, you know? right. Um, and someone does want to know, and if you can go back to the slide, you had the um, that one publisher that you ordered from. Someone wants to know where can you we order books that are easier. Um, and you had the, okay, yeah, this Royal, yeah, Royal, Royal Fireworks. Fireworks Press. Yes, rfwp.com. Yeah, this is when she Take said earlier. Take a look at that. It's it's got all levels there, and um, including curriculum, homeschool curriculum there too. So. And you said the, the person in charge of this is a person with dyslexia themselves. Yes. That's why they came yes. up with, yeah, perfect. Um, all right. So, um, and you did indicate on the books that you had that blue sticker that indicated that that was part of the collection. Correct. Yes. Awesome. That makes it a little easier for, for identification, you know, when they get put back on the shelves, if somebody's looking for something. Um, our online catalog does have a... Um, special collection designation so that if anybody is looking for it in that catalog um, they can look for the special collection dare to read so you yeah. do lend them through interlibrary loan then if other yes 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 right. our northeast kansas system Beckles, um, <clears throat> um has an online catalog we're connected with about 52 different libraries and um so they do get loaned out that way too yeah Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Lots of good inter information and lots of good uh, questions and and, and uh, interaction. Uh, also, great program. Thank you so much, Kim. We are going to thank you. Over to, yeah, thank you for being with us today.